10.13. Glycerin flows steadily through a horizontal tube of length 1.5 meter and radius 1 centimeter. If the amount of glycerin collected per second at one end is 4 into 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram per second, what is the pressure difference between the two ends of the tube? Density of glycerin that is equal to 1.3 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube and viscosity of glycerin that is 0 0.83 Pascal second. You may also like to check if the assumption of laminar flow in the tube is correct one. Now see, length of the tube that is given to you 1.5 meter. Radius of the tube that is 1 centimeter, so that is 10 raised to minus 2 meter. Now mass collected per second of the fluid flowing through it, that is 4 into 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram per second. Now density of the glycerin that is 1.3 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube and coefficient of viscosity that is 0 0.83 pascal second. Now see here, mass collected per second that is given to you. We know this thing, density that is mass upon volume. So volume that is mass upon density. So we can write volume of the liquid flowing in one second. We denote it by capital Q. So volume of liquid flowing in one second, that is mass collected in one second upon density. Okay. Now Q that is equal to 4 into 10 raised to minus 3 upon 1.3 into 10 raised to 3. Solve it you will get the answer. Q that is this much meter cube per second. Now, the volume of the liquid flowing through any cross section of the tube in one second, that is given by the equation Q equal to pi P R raised to 4, 8 eta L, where P that is the pressure difference between two end of the tube because if there is the pressure difference between two end of the tube then and then only the flow will be there otherwise not. So now in this equation if we make P as a subject then P that is equal to 8 eta L upon pi R4 into Q then we will get the pressure difference between two ends of the tube. Now see Substitute the values in this equation, eta that is 0.83, length of the tube given to you 1.5 meter, radius that is 10 raised to minus 2 meter, and Q that we already calculated. So if we substitute all these values of eta, L, R, Q, then we will get the pressure difference. Clear to all of you? Now we can derive this equation as per this one. See, suppose this one is the tube having radius equal to R and in it, the fluid is flowing. So there is the laminar flow. Suppose we think about one cylindrical layer having radius equal to X, okay? which one is moving with velocity V, then it is given by V equal to P upon 4 eta L into R square minus X square, where P that is the pressure difference. Now, if we take X equal to zero, means at the axis of the tube, the velocity of the fluid that is in this equation substitute X equal to zero. Then after exactly at x equal to r, so if we take x equal to r, then velocity will be zero. It implies that the average velocity with which the fluid is flowing, that is v1 plus v2 by two. So 
v1 that is p r square upon 4 eta l v2 that is 0 and if we take whole thing by 2 then we will get resultantly p r square upon 8 eta l okay now velocity of the liquid flowing through any cross section that is nothing but the flow rate okay so if we take a flow rate that is v average it implies that suppose from this particular cross section whatever the volume of the fluid is passing then that will be accommodated in the length of the tube equal to v average and suppose the cross sectional area that is a then cross sectional area into length will give you the volume of the fluid passed through that particular cross section so we can write now q the volume of the liquid flowing in one second that is v average into cross sectional area which is pi r square so v average that is p r square upon 8 eta l into pi r square so resultantly we will get q that is equal to pi p r is to 4 upon 8 eta l in this way this equation can be derived clear to all of you